the geopolitical region's history and particularly one of Afghanistan clarify certain key aspects that we must take into account when revising the strategy of the coalition for the current conflict. In 1725 the Lord Jigar was created in Kabul. It's a meeting of tribal chiefs, who in 1747 founded the Afghan state controlled by a monarchy of the Dharani tribe, who since then are known as the Dharani of the Pashtun ethnic group, and extended their domain through the north at the expense of Turkmen, Uzbek, and Tajik. They also conquered certain parts of the east, in the Punjab, Kashmir and Balochistan. This way, they created the fragile empire mainly Pashtun, which was the ethnic group ruling. This is without doubt part of the Pashtuns collective memory, because they have a deeper ethnic and tribal sentiment than the one of the Afghan nationalism. The fragility of the Afghan monarchy was the result of the rivalries between the Pashtun factions, frequently encouraged by neighbor countries. Over time, the political control of the Pashtuns has retracted on Kabul and the rest of ethnic groups have been systematically marginalized from government posts. This fact has caused a number of riots between ethnic groups. After establishing itself in India, the British Empire competed against the Russian Empire for the geopolitical control of Afghanistan. In the decade of 1830, the Afghan asked the Russian assistance, leading to the rejection of the British. This achievement was the spark that provoked the first of the three Anglo-Afghan wars which took place between 1839 and 1842. The British had to renounce its dominance in Afghanistan, since they were defeated. 36 years later, the advancement of Russia in the region was clear, and this started the Second Anglo-Afghan War that lasted two years. This confrontation ended with the purchase of the Pashtun tribal chief's political will. They signed the Treaty of Rawalpindi, according to which Afghanistan became an associated state of British India. Great Britain recognized Afghanistan's independence in 1919, after being defeated during the Third War. That is, the British didn't achieve a military victory, but political and it was only possible through negotiations with the Pashtun chiefs. This historical lesson should be remembered when facing the challenges at the present time. The Dharani reign lasted until 1973 when the King Zia was deposed through a coup d'etat lead by Muhammad Daud Khan, who proclaimed the Republic. In 1978 a pragmatic pro-communist government, which intended to develop a project of modernization over its ideology was established. In order to carry through this project, it was necessary to smear the traditional systems. For this reason, they tried to undermine the tribal and religious chiefs that were part in that moment of the opposition. The project for modernization was supported by the USSR and promoted the idea of creating Pashtunistan. This clearly went against the Pakistani interests. Its Prime Minister, Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, went so far as to encourage a conspiracy against Daud Khan, supported by the more fundamentalist Pashtuns leaders. After the failure of the conspiracy, the Pashtun leaders had to seek refuge in Peshawar where they created an infrastructure in 1976, in order to recruit Mujahideen people from all around the Islamic world. To fight Daud Khan and the Communists, the Islamic Party organized them in detachments. In 1978, the Communists carried through a coup d'etat against Daud Khan, who was executed. This gave way to a new government that placed more emphasis on national unity, socio-economic justice and respect to the Islam, trying not to exacerbate the Islamists. On 5 December 1978, Moscow and Kabul signed the Treaty of Friendship, Good Neighborliness and Cooperation that on 24 December 1979 the Soviets used as an excuse to intervene in Afghanistan with 80,000 soldiers. The USSR had 100,000 troops in Afghanistan that had been provided with heavy weaponry and that didn't hesitate to use it. They also tried to control the country's development through the introduction of improvements in the women's rights, the education sector, a land reform, 
following the model valid during the Soviet time in the Central Asia republics, and that changed them radically. For example, Uzbekistan was very similar to Afghanistan, but the Soviets forced gender equality, its education. Therefore, the social reality in these republics greatly differs the Afghan even though its origin was very similar. However, all of them were considered foreign laws imposed by force, contrary to the Islamic traditions and the Pashtun code. The Soviet invasion of Afghanistan left Pakistan in an uncomfortable geopolitical situation between India and the USSR, ally of the Indian government. Due to this geopolitical position, Pakistan had to renounce to the strategic depth in case of a military conflict with India. In the Cold War context, the USSR's intervention was considered as a hostile movement by Reagan's administration, which decided to send help to the insurgents through Pakistan's intelligence service, along with Saudi Arabia and China. The insurgents was provided with Stinger surface-to-air with infrared-guided missiles, which with a range of more than 4,500 meters, they practically prevented the fly of helicopters, that were a key aspect in these types of conflicts. In addition, it forced fixed-wing aircrafts, particularly the Su-25, to carry out their bombings from higher and thus significantly worsening their precision. This difficulty, the weariness of the Soviet society due to the great number of casualties among its conscripts and Gorbachev's policy forced the Soviet withdrawal in February 1989.